outside of our control. It's not like he wants to kill. He just doesn't want to die. You know what I'm saying? It's that, it's that situation when you got, we, we are living in a war zone. I feel like I can represent my generation so much because I honestly just do not care about the people. But now, I cannot die. I can't live with the two straight. You know, I'm not suicidal. I'm not, I can't go until y'all really know what time it is. And then after that, boom, it's all over. And we can see, you know, how this is wrong. But that's how it is. The reason being is because if I can't live free, if I can't live with the same respect as the next man, I don't want to be here. Because God has cursed me to see what life should be like. All right, so today, the topic we're gonna discuss is lust. Why are we talking about lust? Lust is everywhere. <laughs> lust is in movie, TV shows, uh, lust is on social media, lust is in real life. There's lust all over, especially in today's time. Back in the day, especially in ancient times, 1950s, 1800s, there was no social media. So it wasn't as easy as it is today to lust. You could you can just get on Instagram and lust. You can get on any social media and see pretty much whatever you want from women or men. You you can just continuously watch and think of lusting behaviors all day long. So when we talk about lust, of course, I want to look at it from two perspectives. I want to look at what science is saying about lust, and I want to look at what God has to say about lust. Because when I think about the plan of God in lust or sex, right, I think we know the planning was you wait until marriage. The reason for waiting until marriage would be able to eliminate any outside spirits or demons that comes with sex, right? You don't have to worry about your partner liking someone else's um, sexual pleasures better than you. You don't have to worry about anything. Y'all both are pure, being able to learn each other's body in a marriage. That is the planning. Everything doesn't go according to plan, but that seems to have been what God's plan was. So that way it eliminates competition, eliminates so many problems that we have today. So when we look at women, right, and men, and we look at sex or lusting, I think we should look at what science is saying about lust or sex because I think it would explain a lot for us. So I pull up here what it does to our brains, right? So at the point of orgasm, the brain releases, this is for women, the brain releases massive amounts of oxytocin and dopamine, said Grotto. Oxytocin or the love hormone is thought to promote feelings of connection and bonding with a partner after orgasm. And dopamine is a feel good neuron transmitter connected to the reward center of the brain. What is this saying? Women release oxytocin or the love hormone, which is why they connect and bond to their partners after sex. We know women who, if he don't hit it right, he lame, he, he, he corny. You don't wanna talk to him no more. Get him out the game. But let him hit it right, oh yeah, you love him. Oh, he the one. You can't get away from him. Yeah, that's because when you're having these intercourses, your body is releasing certain hormones that make you feel good and connect to this person. So let's go on to the next article that I brought up, right? Um, and this goes into more of what dopamine is. Dopamine is the main hormone responsible for our body's systems of positive feedback and reward. Uh, this next line is very important. Whenever you eat, have sex, have sex, take drugs, or do anything else you find pleasurable, your body releases dopamine. Let's stop there. 
have sex. Whenever you eat, have sex, take drugs, or do anything else you find pleasurable, you release dopamine. Meaning, having a lot of sex is literally like taking drugs. You are, your body is releasing the same dopamine hormones. And once your body continuously release, or once your body release these hormones a few times to certain um, interactions like sex or drugs, what do your body want to do again? Release that same dopamine again, no matter how it, it comes, meaning if it's by drugs or by sex or by going outside and doing whatever it is you find pleasurable, you're going to want to do that same activity again. So if you are having fun, having sex, the dopamine that's in your bloodstream, this is released in your bloodstream, it, it will literally make you want to do it again and again and again. Let's go to the next article, right? And this is explaining what oxytocin is. And it is saying what is a naturally occurring hormone and a neurotransmitter, which is a, a a cell in your brain, cells, it's, it's billions of those, that is produced in the hypothalamus and transmitted into the bloodstream. The hormone is released during childbirth and sex, right? Which is the, the, the most important part because when we come down here, six effects of the love hormone to the body. It plays a vital role in childbirth. Yep. One of its primary roles is to aid the body during labor. The hormone is produced in a large amount. Um, the end, it helps with production of milk in the breast and discharge from the nipples. So this is released during childbirth. This That's why women have the connection to their child way stronger than that man may have because their body is releasing chemicals that a man won't be able to release during childbirth. But then I want to go down to here, right? It helps females form a bond with their partner during sexual activity. With, oxy, with oxytocin being associated with social behavior, it covers both sexual behavior and bonding between couples. A study found that oxytocin produced in the brain of a woman during sexual activity plays a role in forming a monogamous bond with her sexual partner. This is where the love hormone or cuddle drug is in action. So it seems like God, when he put our bodies together, he understood all of these hormones that would be released, um, especially which plays a role in forming a monogamous bond with her sexual partner. But if you are creating these bonds with multiple sex partners, you will eventually burn yourself out and damage yourself, just like someone that takes a lot of the same drug will burn themselves out and damage themselves. You, the, the, the way that that feeling feels the first time, it will not feel that way the hundredth time. It just won't. So let, let, let's carry on, shall we, right? And let's look at this right here. Because I wanted to show the difference. Men, on the other hand, this is still backing up everything that you know we're saying. Uh, oxytocin is released during sex, known as the cuddle hormone. But it says men, on the other hand, instead of getting a surge of bonding hormone, receive a surge of simple pleasure. The problem is that when a man has an orgasm, the main hormone release is dopamine, the pleasure hormone. And the surge can be addictive. We just get pleasure from it. No attachment, no oxytocin is released from our bodies. Um, the, the other thing that we, that we release um, is, I can't find it right now, but um, it helps us want to protect. It helps us want to protect our woman that we're having sex with more, which that makes sense because we are the protector. So it seemed again, God understood what he was doing 
he have us, we just have fun, or we we'll want to protect that woman. That woman, she also gets dopamine and has fun, but she also gets connected and bonds to us, like she would bond to her child. If we don't know this and we just go out and we just lust after each other, we can end up in some sticky situations, bonding and protecting people that we probably shouldn't bond or protect. And that also answers the, the saying of uh, the women be more attached than the men. Science is helping back that up as well. So now let's step away from science and let's see what God has to say about lust or what the Bible says about lust. So we're going to start here at Genesis 2.24 because it's very simple. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. When he says one flesh, you know, that's what I believe sex is, right? Because you have to wait until sex to have, I mean, wait until marriage to have sex. So since you have to wait till marriage to have sex, once you become one flesh by having sex, that's where the chemicals and hormones come in at. Not chemicals, but hormones. That's where that come into effect because it's deeper than just, oh, I'm married to this person and now I had sex with them and we're one flesh. No, you will become one flesh with your bodies on not just the outside, but the inside as well. One, again, we probably don't understand that part of it so when we go out and lust and do whatever it is we want to do we don't think of the cons that come with this let's go on to this one uh, 1 Corinthians six thirteen. food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food and God will destroy both one and the other the body is not meant for sexual immorality but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Our body was not made to just go out and have sex all day. It was created for a greater purpose than sex. If you write out your day, hour by hour, do you really have time to write in sex? There's enough work that we need to be doing. I'm not saying we won't fall. We all may fall, but it's about after failing, learning how to overcome. But it, it tells you very simple. The body is not meant for sexual and morality. Let's, let's go on. We're going to go to Hebrews 13, 3 through 5. But I really want to read four. Let marriage be had in honor among all. And let the bed be undefiled. For fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So that again is helping me believe right he wanted us to get married before we could be able to have sex the way we think we want because he understands that it will be very tempting um you know there's a verse that even says you know if you can't stay if you're single you know i would advise you to get married because it is very hard to stay single and not have sex i mean they knew this back in the bible and last but not least we're going to go to Matthew 5, 28. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Because even lusting in your head is wrong. You should be able to have more control over your thoughts, you know, um, about lust. And again, we're not perfect. We're not sitting here saying you're going to have to be exactly perfect at this or else. No. But when we look at what science is saying, science is, is, is saying we do get attached to each other through, through sex. There is a deeper connection outside of just us having sex. And then the Bible is telling us to stay away from just having sex so it seems like God wanted us to stay away from producing our hormones over and over again so that way we don't get addicted to sex like we are addicted to 
drugs. You know, the, the devil, he doesn't care if you're addicted to everything except God. It seems as if we are made to be addicted to something. We can always be addicted to a game or to a TV show or to a person or to a thing we like, a pleasurable desire like sex, but we get distracted from the one thing we should be addicted to and that's God. So, of course, uh, we're gonna conclude, we're gonna pray, and then we're gonna get out of here. So God, I pray that um, this word helps someone. I pray that it helps them understand to control their lustful desires not just because science says so but because you said so as well um, and we thank you we really do we thank you for your words um, without your words to be able to help us get through and navigate through life a lot of things would not be so clear so um, we're very thankful uh, we're grateful for your words and we love you and we pray for not just ourselves, but the entire world, because this whole world needs prayer, even if they don't know that they need it. So we love you, God, and we thank you, God. Amen. And as far as my people, I really hope that this helped you out, man. Stop lusting. You know, it's nothing is going to nothing you want in life is easy, but we have to stop lusting so that we can stay on mission, so that we can save ourselves for someone without forcing them to accept we have had a lustful past. We don't wanna push that narrative going forward. It's okay to just go out and lust in the world. No, science is showing it's not okay and that it can become addictive, just like a drug, and the Bible is showing it's not okay. So I'll catch y'all on the next video.